Hello, this is Groff and Kellogg reporting live from the Laurentian Base in Qinghai. This is a special presentation sponsored by the Education Associations of Europa, Tundras, and Oshana. Today, I have the honor of teaching you all how to keep yourself safe from radiation. Radiation is the transmission of energy through space and materials. They come in the forms of wave, particles, and wave particles. Radiation is sometimes very beneficial, providing us warm summers, cozy fires, and even the food that we eat. But too much radiation can be very harmful. The food that we eat needs radiation in order to keep it nutrient, but too much radiation can change the food's DNA and make it potentially toxic. Cozy fires can keep us warm in the winter, but too much radiation can lead the fire to spread. And the sun can provide fun beach days in the summer, but too much of it can leave your skin burning. Today, I have the pleasure of going over the types of radiation that you will encounter, starting with alpha radiation. Alpha radiation is the most common type of radiation and the most infamous. It takes the form of a particle, specifically a helium atom, or more so its nuclei. These are made when unstable elements decay. As the most dangerous particle, we are fortunate to have many ways to easily overcome it. Defending ourselves from this particle's harm is as simple as holding up a thin piece of paper. Next up is beta radiation. Beta radiation contains many similar traits to alpha radiation because they are both high energy particles. However, instead of beta radiation consisting of protons and neutrons like their sibling particle, a beta particle only consists of an electron. Beta radiation is less impactful on our health than alpha radiation, but it takes a little more to deflect them, like aluminum. Moving past that, we have gamma radiation. You missed it. That was seamless. <laughs> right in the mouth. Didn't drip. <laughs> gamma radiation is unlike alpha or beta, as it is a wave instead of a particle. And because it is a wave, it is able to travel great distances and pass through many more materials than the others, only getting stopped by thick lead. And finally, we have the last and most peculiar form, delta radiation. Now this radiation is mostly referred to as truss radiation as it was discovered well before a naming standard was put in place. Truss radiation is the only radiation visible to the human eye. It mostly appears as visual snow and static. This doesn't only affect people, however, as cameras can also pick up on the static. Truss radiation takes the form of a quantum wave particle showing properties of both particle radiation and wave radiation. These properties can be shown separately or together as one. Truss radiation has a unique property acting as a sort of swarm, spreading and growing lifelike in its surroundings. The harm truss radiation has on people is fickle, as it can vary from absolutely nothing to a variety of detrimental effects. I'll go in depth in just a moment. Truss radiation can be very tricky to contain, it must be encased in metal, preferably lead, much like gamma radiation, although any opening, crack, or orifice will lead it to instantly leak and spread the truss radiation. Luckily, since I'm currently stationed at Qinghai, I have the opportunity to show you all truss radiation. In a moment, this room is going to be flooded with truss radiation, showing you that camera visual static effect that I mentioned earlier. And don't worry about me. I've been working with this stuff for years, and I'm well aware of the risk that comes with it. Are we ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. As you can see, the entire room is filled with static. But that's not just for the camera. Everything you're seeing is what I'm seeing here with my naked eye. Now, let's start with the effects of all of this. That was it. Okay, <laughs> okay.